Yeah, I got my stuff unloaded here before I get on my next project. I gotta show this. I think I got a pretty good deal on these tires. Like I said, the other ones I first said I wanted, which I probably should have bought just for the disc. They were load range C. They would have worked perfect. And I didn't even look at these to see what range Z's are. But when I unloaded these, I'm looking. This one here is load range E. So this is, what, a 10-ply tire? Uh, so I probably can't see. One other one was a load range D, and I think them are 8-ply tires. And I didn't look at all four of these, so... These two are heavier tires than the model ones, or at least two of these are. So I think I got a pretty good deal on that. These, these I could have used on a hay wagon or something, eight and ten ply tires. You say, you always second guess yourself, you know, a hundred bucks. That's about, about what I would have paid for them at the tire place so I could get them, because I, like the one I just did on the plow. It was a 14 ply tire, and it was trailer tires, or not 14 ply, 14 inch tire. And they had trailer tires, same thing as them. They were just 14 inch. And that tire and tube, they charged me 40 bucks. So, I mean, even as hard as it is to get 15s, even if I had put, uh, spent 125 on them, probably would have got them, it probably would have been worth it just to have them. But again, I got four cheaper than I could the mother four, and it'll do what I want to do. I mean, I only need two for the discs right now. So, whatever, we're good. But now the other project I'm working on, just got back from town, trying to find something that'll work. I've had an issue, and I probably shouldn't have been running this, but I don't think what the issue is indicating is an issue. And, but I want to get double check. So what it is, is for first off, I don't know why, this is always this way when I bought the tractor and when I overhauled it, you just put it back, but this is your oil pressing sending unit that goes up to the gauge in the tractor. And they're old enough and stuff, I don't know if it actually works. It's indicating pressure. I mean, it's going up three quarters away, indicating pressure. But I don't know if that gauge is accurate because the needle does bounce around a little bit and kind of hangs and drags. It's not a smooth sweep in motion. So I'm not sure if that gauge is good. Who knows if the pressure sending unit is good. And then they had this gauge screwed on top here. And even since I got the tractor back from being overhauled, I don't think it ever read the oil pressure. I mean, this should be reading 30, 40 pounds at least. And it's usually around 20 pounds, even if I'm running, you know, 1500 RPM or something. Well, I've noticed here in the last couple times I run this tractor, I don't even know if it's reading 10 pounds of pressure. So, like I say, between the two gauges, I'm sure it's getting enough oil pressure, especially after yesterday plowing for five hours and I'm running 2000 RPM, working the piss out of the thing. You know, plowing the gear faster, going right along, pulling the hill. I'm sure it's got oil pressure. But I want to make sure, so that's what I'm trying to find. What I needed to find was an oil pressure gauge that's got a stem in the center. Well, of course, nobody has one. I did get a gauge set that does have an adapter. It should match up to that, but it's got compression fittings. The gauge, the... Inlet is offset So I can't try to find an adapter somehow to so I could screw it back on there like it was So my only goal is to make sure it's getting proper oil pressure at least more oil pressure than 10 pounds Which I'm 99% sure it is So but I don't want to go through the hassle especially because these this kit came with um, Nylon tubing they do have another extra kit that's got copper tubing that I could get to change this over, which I might do to um, 
once I'm sure of this. But right now, my only goal is, like I say, make sure it's getting oil pressure. So I got this adapter, which should fit up for that. So I should just screw that in and then connect this to this, this to that, and I'd be good to go. The only question is, am I going to want to... Well, that's what I'll find out, whether I want to take the extra effort and mount it on somewhere up here, find a place to mount it, run the tubing. If I did that, I'd go get that copper tubing to do it. But I can mount the gauges up on top of there or something. And it's going to be cheaper than getting the stuff from International. Like I, say, like I showed there before here, that wiring harness definitely screwed up. I'm going to have to look more into that. Maybe eventually get another wiring harness, try to get this stuff hooked up better. But uh, like I say, if I got to buy that gauge and end up buying a pressure sending unit, you know, you're probably looking at 100, 200 bucks. Because I'm, I bet that gauge has got to be 60, 70 bucks, and the sending unit is probably 30, 40 at least. Well, this, like I say, it's just cheap, just enough to make sure it's going to run. This was 19, uh, yeah, 20 bucks, 19.99. So, like I say, if this is, works good enough, I can figure out how to mount it and, and run the tubing up to it, or just get this on there for now and then try to locate. Another gauge like this to replace it and just screw that one right in. So that's the first of the project. And then the second one is how to do a temperature gauge too. Now I know the temperature gauge does not work at all on this because probably one of them four wires that I found ripped off, broke, not attached, whatever the other day. That's probably the wire that goes up to that gauge. I'm pretty sure the gauge is shot. And who knows if the sending unit's good, you know, by the time we replace all that. This one here was like 24 bucks. But this is, the, got the old bulb on it in the tube. So with that, if I can get in here, find where the, just double check where the sending unit really is for this. I have to pull the shields. I can't see nothing in there. But pull that sending unit out and it's got the adapters. I, this is what I did on the Ford. I put one of them in on that. And see what this tractor is doing. I might have to, probably should have just got a thermostat and did that too. But that's the one issue. Like I told, told there a couple of weeks ago when I chopped bedding, this thing seemed to get hotter than what it's supposed to get. Or should have been just run that chopper well like yesterday it didn't seem that hot but it got hot i was puking cooling out of the radiator cap and that's when i was on the first field plowing fourth gear pulling that hill going steady straight along you know back back and back non-stop and pulling that hill i was getting cooling dripping down the side some coming down this side here but when i got into the other field and i geared down a gear and just steady pulled along. I didn't, it wasn't leaking anymore. So I don't know if this thing's getting overly hot for sure. So that's why I want to get that gauge on. And if it's looking like it's hot, the next step will be this here thermostat. But that's what I'm playing with here right now because I got last thing I want to do is seize this thing up. I mean, I already put $7,000 in this thing here seven eight years ago whatever it was when i did the overhaul so i don't need need season up and doing it again because if i do it again the tractor's going to be sitting wherever it blows up because i don't have the money to do it again so i'm going to get this all hooked up and like i say it's no big deal just thread this into that t connect that to that that to that and start it up I ain't worried about hooking up the lights or anything. In fact, I'd probably pop that thing right out of there and not worry about it. But, as like I say, that's probably what it's going to be. I'm probably just going to have this on there for now and then maybe find a better quality gauge. Because 20 bucks, you're not going to expect much from that. You know, I'd rather spend 40 or 50 bucks on 
a gauge like this that I could screw right on and have a little qual better quality. But again, right now it's the double check that I'm not going to be blowing this thing up anytime soon. So I'll get back to that and we'll see what it does. <clears throat> well, that took all five minutes. Okay, everything screwed in, snugged up. I just hung it there on a zip tie there for now. And yeah, that up there. But hopefully it goes up past 25. So that's what we're going to find out here right now. Find the key here. Damn, I knew there was no goddamn way that could have been 10 pounds of pressure this thing was putting out. It took a second to build up pressure because I get oil through that line. But, well, maybe 50 pounds is a little too high. I feel so, so much better. I have thought since I overhauled this tractor that gauge that was on there was bad. Because it never really went up above, above 30 pounds. And it would I drop way down when it was idling. But you know, 30 pounds of pressure should be more than enough. And uh that was the other thing. He rebuilt the oil pump on this. Well, I can't remember, did he rebuild or replace? He had to redo something with the oil pump anyhow, because the kit that he put in this has the cooling jets onto the skirts or lubricating jets however you want to say it and i think it helps cool it too but uh, i know he had to do something different with the oil pump because what was in here wasn't putting wouldn't put out enough volume enough pressure or something so i don't know if he had to rebuild it or they had to change it because of that or whatever but i'm well satisfied with 50 pounds of pressure now all i gotta do is figure out if i want to I say what I want to just try to find another gauge to go into there because I'm not crazy about this but bounce across fields is the last thing I'm debating whether I should leave this in here because if that hose cracks it's going to pump oil as long as I got I know it's got oil pressure I have no problem taking this back off with that other gauge on so I don't have to worry about it blowing out that line but again like I say should I Go get the copper kit, copper line kit for this. And mount it somewhere up here. Or see if I can find the gauge like that was on there and put that back on here. Be a hell of a lot easier. I mean, I wouldn't have to find a place to pass the wire through and stuff. Or the tubing through. But, I don't know. At least now I'm happy. I um, don't have to worry about that. Now my next problem is doing the cooling. So I gotta, I'm gotta, i gonna pull this out of this wet grass. Get this shield off. Let's see if I can see what the wires are. I hope that cooling line, or that sending unit ain't behind something in here too bad. I think it'd be right there on top of the block or something. That I do have to figure out where I'm going to pass that line through. It's got to be something either come through the floor. I do think I probably should run it down the other side. I don't, definitely don't want to run it on this side. Well, like I say, once I get 
get that shield off and get it looking a little bit better in there. Get a figure out. And then we'll see what that temperature does and see whether I gotta do a thermostat. Maybe I gotta do a water pump. We'll figure it out. Looks like we might be getting some more rain here yet. Okay, here's what I've my thoughts on temperature gauge. As far as I can tell, that's the temperature sending unit up in there. And I don't even like that there. So the thing I got, or the gauge I got ain't gonna match up to that anyhow. I don't think there's anything I can screw that in there with. And looking at my jumble of wires here, this one, I'm taking hooks up to that wire over there. I haven't figured out if that's light or the horn. I don't even know if the horn works anymore. I plugged it in, tried the horn button. It didn't do nothing. Might have a blown fuse for, since these might be shorted out. This one here, I'm assuming is the one that goes up to that. Uh, I haven't figured out where that one connects to or that one. I don't even know what the hell else is up here other than the lights and the horn. Is there uh and it's just the ground there. I don't know if this has a um Okay, okay, okay. I'm wondering you know that won't reach it. Maybe this one's supposed to go on there. I don't know. And I take it that's that must be like a airflow restrictor indicator. So. I don't know, like saying most of that don't make much of a difference. If that's what it is, that's only indicating if the air filter's plugged up. So, like I say, now, since I don't like, don't think I can hook into that tank up there, which I don't want to monkey with, screw that up, that's worse yet. I have not seen any other pipe plugs or any other fittings that I could tap into other than, and it probably is the simplest, easiest one, this right here. This T comes out, this valve, this goes to shut off for the coolant filter. And it comes out of there, comes down, and goes into the oil cooler here. So, there is no, no real easy, decent way. So like I say, there, there's nothing here to tap into. It's too hard to put a T or anything here. Like I say, the best thing it looks like to me is take this plug out. And if that tube will bend enough, what I should do, that would be the right thing to do, is um, the easiest, like I say, if I got the right adapters to plug into that, then run my line however and screw it into there. But I kind of want to run the line through the other side or back to the other side anyhow. If I come off that to come maybe like across here, hang it in here, come across and then run it back through here somehow, down and up, find a path for that. Don't want to run it the other side because you got the turbo and the exhaust manifold there. It looks like I got a crack on my exhaust manifold right there. I guess they're all prone to cracking. That's nothing I'm gonna worry about at this time. But what I don't know, I say if I'm gonna have enough flexibility into that tube so I can run basically I, it'll be coming straight out whether I got enough flexibility or be able to move it around so I go back the other side and down I have a feeling what's going to happen is 
I haven't taken this shield off yet. This is where the fuse panel is. Hopefully there's an opening or something there that I can go down. Or I don't know if I have to drill a small hole or something somewhere here to stick it up through, run it up beside one of these pillars. Could do that. But the question is whether biggest issue, all this other stuff is simple. Whether I can just come straight out and around or whether I can put an elbow on here and aim it up or do a double elbow or down around like this way. Because I have to have so much room for that tube to stick in, so I can't just put an elbow on here and screw it in the elbow. I'm going to have to have a nipple or something sticking up a little bit for that to go in. I don't think I'm monkey today at this time. I don't want. Like I say, tomorrow's Sunday. Monday, everybody's going to be closed. I can go tomorrow and get the, some fittings to try. Maybe I can work on it tomorrow. Like I say, it wouldn't take much. I mean, the longest part is going to be to route that somewhere. And there should be an opening. I mean, if there's more of a gap in there, I could run it through that with the tack cable. I guess I'll find something somewhere. I'll make something happen. Figure something out. But again, like I say, I'm wanna make sure this thing's not getting overly hot. I mean, it's, I think it is getting hotter than what it should be. And then next thing, figure out exactly what's leaking here. I've never been able to, I always thought it was a valve cover gasket. I don't think it's coming from the injectors. That's leaked ever since I had this rebuilt anyhow. It's gotten a little bit worse. It wasn't bad to start with, but. I've tried tightening the valve cover gasket down. That hasn't seemed to make a difference. Maybe I'll run it here while I got the shields off. Looking a little bit closer. Pressure wash this off again. See, so kind of pinpoint more. It is kind of hard to tell whether it's diesel fuel or oil. I'm pretty sure it's oil. And I don't think it's a head gasket. Cause it's all wet up above, it's wetter up above, so it's got to be running down. So I don't know, but I guess at least I know this plug will come loose. That's all I got to do now is figure out how I'm going to tap into that plug and run that line. I suppose I better get that gauge out and see how much tube I got, how far out it can go. I mean, it should, should have plenty. But I guess that seems to be the easiest place to tap into, at least get some sort of temperature range reading. Yeah, I'm going to do some looking around here and see what I figure out. Yeah, it's the next day. I went this morning and got some parts. I think I can make this temperature gauge work. It ended up being kind of what I was afraid of. I would love to have, and I think it would have worked, if I could just put this adapter straight into that T. There should be enough depth there to get the sending unit in there. Problem is, one, I think that's going to end up putting this tube or this, uh, I don't think it's a wire, I think it's just a pressure tube. It might stick out just past the frame here, or the shields, so it'd be risk at being caught. Plus, this cable is 
tube, whatever you want to call it, is borderline, Let's do something different than that, long enough. Right now, this is all part of the, I'm going to get the gauge set. I'm going to have to, I mean, it's no big deal. I could fasten it somewhere here. It should be fine. But, uh, I need to get more slack to come out this way. And then I'm going to end up the risk of kinking it. If I snag something. So right now, I got it through the cab there. And it's coming up. Across the top of the valve cover gasket. I'm going to get zip tie or something to get it so it holds off that somehow but i could come up to this clip here so that's where it's going through right there and so i went and got an elbow and a nipple and a connector because this could go right into there but the bulb is too long i can't tighten it down all the way I didn't see anything shorter than this. I would love to have just an inch, just an inch and a half nipple. I don't think it's going to make a difference, but that's my concern. That if I could have got it stuck this way, I'm going to get a more accurate temperature measure than having it out here. I guess heat transfers. I mean, it doesn't have to be in flowing flow, uh, a flow, so it should be fine. But, uh, but yeah, I think that's going to work. I got this aim so flat. I was going to aim it straight up, but I think it would be better to hold it flat this way. Then, I don't know. I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference, but I'm sure there's one way it probably should be done. But when you're talking, all I'm caring to see if it's getting up how much over 200. If it's getting up to 240, well... Now, that's a big problem, but, you know, if it's getting that hot, it's going to show up anyhow. I mean, if it stays down in the 180, 200 range, well, then we know, no, it shouldn't be that big of a problem. Thing is, I might have found the reason why this is the radiator cap. You see that it's all chewed up. So I just wonder if that's why it was letting it puke out. I have this cap here that was on the Ford before I, um, back when I got the radiator re fix last year, he recommended that I put a seven pound cap on it and, you know, being the tractor's 40 years old, you know, seams are getting weak and stuff. You know, he fixed what he saw. But I said, it wouldn't hurt to put a seven pound cap so that you're not running as much pressure. So I thought, well, I'll just take that cap, nothing wrong with it as far as I know, and put it on here. The problem is, if you look at the width of that tab and the width of that tab, I can't get that cap on that radiator. So I don't know if there's actually difference, that much of a difference in caps or whatever, if this is something special. So I have to go, I can't go tomorrow. Like I say, it's going to be no big deal. I can go Tuesday, see if I can get another cap. Maybe I have to order it directly from International. I don't know. But I don't think it should be anything special. But that might be the reason why I had, when it got warm, it was pushing it out more. So hopefully all that will solve the problem. Right now, as I did stick a piece of tube through here so I don't pitch this tube. Like I say, I'm going to zip tie it. Probably this wiring harness or something. And hold it in place. So I guess all I can do now is put the shields back on. Yeah, somehow. What I should do is make a strap. Get something to come off this. Yeah, it's still a bit short. I guess I can get a little more slack. Mount it on a bracket right there. Mount it to that bolt. It'll be just as good as anything, I guess. 
right now, like I say, it's just a monitor. If I have to leave it to dangle here so I can see it, so be it for now. So I guess I better get the antifreeze back in this. I'm gonna have to mix up some because it was way down. I think I'm gonna have to put some oil in it and check the hydraulics and then see if I can go plow some more. At least get that done to my cousin's done today. So I'm gonna guess there's nothing else I wanted to say about it. I think the biggest concern is getting it so this is gonna be in fluid and keep this routed away from the manifold and turbo. Which it should be plenty clear here. I say it should work. Ain't gonna be the best, but I could have plenty of slack. You know, no matter how I do it, I could have ran it maybe down along here somewhere, behind all this stuff, and come up, come up in between here. Maybe, maybe that's what I should have done. You know, it gave me more slack. And then I can maybe mount the gauge onto that or something. Oh well, I'll think about that later. So right now I'm gonna do this. Hopefully maybe see, hopefully determine it's not something with the thermostat. Because if that's the case, I'll have to pull that thermostat yet. So it ain't gonna matter if I do that, then maybe I will route that. It can come off here, up between here, through here. Run it along this wiring harness here. Yeah, that probably would have been a better spot. I could have came all the way across to this wiring harness up through here. But then again, it's sticking out here and driving along tree line or something. It's more prone to snap that here. Like I say, it's pretty well protected going this way. Again, it's one of them things. You got 10 ways to do it. One way's probably better. Eight ways will work. One's probably wrong. All you can do is try it and see what happens. So I'm going to get this back together and do that. Try it and see what happens.